What's good, y'all? Welcome to my review for this week's episode of My Hero Academia Season 6. Holy Jesus, that was an amazing episode, man. Especially the ending. The ending, oh my goodness, bro. Yeah, but, yeah, man, uh, I, I, did end up, I did not end up recording a reaction for this episode, guy, in case you guys were because I know in last week I was kind of debating. I was like, oh, will I, will I not, will I? I ended up not doing it. Although... Oh my god, this is getting egregious. So, a couple things I want to talk about real quick before we jump right into the actual review. First off, Toho claimed the reaction from the uh, the reaction from last week's episode again. First off, I had to lower the volume already to get through the bots. But then once again, it gets manually claimed by them, and of course the video got blocked worldwide. The weird thing is, they claimed the different section of the episode um, that was basically the opening of the episode with Hawks. And so I lowered, so I, so I went back, you know, I did what I used to do, lowered the volume on it. But then, once I tried to re-upload it, they claimed the part that already went through the bots before it. So I lowered the volume, and I had to keep lowering and lowering and lowering, and it kept getting caught by the bots. By the time I was going to get to like the part where I was, where I was about to re-upload to re the video, I couldn't, you couldn't hear anything from it at that point. So I just decided, fuck it, it's a small part of the episode, nothing happens there. I'll just cut it out. So, the part of the, the opening of the episode with Hawks and Tok Tokoyami has been cut from my reaction. If you guys are wondering if there, if you guys noticed that there was a part of the reaction I was missing, that's why. Fuck Toho. I'm sick and tired of having to do this cat and mouse shit. One other thing I want to quickly talk about as well is that we finally got the new Tsunami schedule. Um, uh, finally got revealed. Now, the interesting thing about this one is that I was, now I was thinking, my predictions were either we're going to get Hero Walker Season 6, which seemed like a long shot because you guys know Crunchyroll doesn't want to play ball with them anymore, for whatever reason. I feel like that's just, you're just leaving money on the table at that point, but whatever, I'm not sorry. I thought it was either going to be that, Main Abyss Season 2, or Bleeds that we're going to cover one, that we're going to cover of the two free slots that we had open. And I ended up being half right. Main Abyss Season 2 was confirmed to be on Tsunami, although they couldn't get the rights to the movie that takes place between uh, Season 1 and Season 2 that you have to watch before starting Season 2. It's on Hulu with the English dub, so I'll just watch it off there before it airs, uh, before it airs on Tsunami. So I'll be, so I'll be all good. Or you can, of course, just pirate if you don't have Hulu or the Blu-ray. So you got, you got options, man. You got options. <laughs> anyway, but they ended up announcing that there was going to do a rerun of Hirawaka Season 5. Now, when I saw this, at first, I thought this thing, that thing said Season 6, because I just saw Hirawaka and instantly assumed it was Season 6. I was shocked that there wasn't anything for Bleach, so I went into the quote tweets to see if anyone else was noticing Bleach after I made my tweet. And no one else had mentioned anything about Bleach on any of the Toonami accounts that I follow, which I thought was kind of strange. But anyway, but then once I checked the quote tweet, someone mentioned, like, made a joke about Sony not wanting to give him the rights for Season 6. And that's why I checked it again, and it was actually said Season 5. It was later confirmed by the guy that's based, like, the head of Toonami that it's not a typo, that it's indeed a rerun of Season 5. Now, I have a couple theories on why this is. Either one, it's due to the, maybe they, they, maybe the contract they have with Season 5 hasn't expired yet, so they just decided, fuck it, let's redo it again. And maybe depending on the ratings it gets, it might end up finally convincing Crunchyroll to give him the rights for Season 6. Doubtful, but maybe I don't know. Or more than likely, it's a placeholder until they finally secure, until they finally fully secure Bleach. Which I wouldn't be surprised. That's what the, if that's like with the one because they mentioned they had other shows to be announced later on. So I'm assuming Bleach is one of them. They probably just haven't fully been able to secure the rights just yet. I don't know what they're talking, what talks are going on with Viz. I wouldn't be surprised they're asking for some good chunk of change because you know of the because you know, Bleach. But that's what I think it's going to happen. Maybe it's just a placeholder there until they get Bleach or maybe another show that they were already, that they're currently in talks with. I don't know, but I thought that was interesting. I'm not going to complain. It's Hirawaka. I love Hirawaka. Wish it was season six, but hey, season five's awesome. Anyway, at least in my personal opinion. Anyway, guys, I've rambled on long enough. Let's get into the actual video. So we start this episode off, basically where we left off last week and showing up different perspectives of what was going on uh, while it was going down, where we see um, the police force and, you know, their little, like, headquarters with all their screens and everything, talking about, uh, you know, recapping and saying, like, oh, Endeavor and uh, the team are now are now on the move to, you know, to assist M Miriko and whatnot. They, they also mentioned that one of the guards mentioned about, of course, the top of the high ends that they found in the basement and how, like, you know, it was hard enough just with one of the high ends trying to take down, with almost taking down two heroes, Hawks and Endeavor back in season four, a man Imagine having more than one. So you had that. We then see some uh, present mic where it's Karen Garaki. And he's like, no, oh, it's all over. It's all over. And we have um, uh, Exless um, kind of like keeping tabs on Endeavor. Although for some reason, or uh, on Shigaraki, I should say. Although for some reason, this dude, and while he's, while he quote unquote is holding, keeping eyes on Shigaraki, which he ain't even doing it. He's just holding his hand there. He notices this like machine I don't know what the fuck this thing is. I don't think we ever were told what this thing actually was. It's still on. So he's like, oh, fuck it, I'll break. So he uses his, like, laser beam eye thing 
to break it. But then this dude, for some reason, in a room surrounded by water, liquid everywhere. We know what happens when you mix liquid or water with electricity. For some reason, this dude does not have the foresight to look around the room, keep tabs on the liquid, making sure it's not hitting any loose cables that could, that could like, you know, that could just, that could just revive Shigaraki. But, as you of course know, Shigaraki awakens because the guy, because the pool, because the water ended up touching on the loose cables. Once again, I don't know why this dude didn't think to check or keep an eyes on the liquid, but whatever the case may be, we got it, so we still have a season we have to get through anyway. So... Shigaraki starts holding, starts like, you know, like shake, like rubbing his arms, rubbing his hands against his arms, saying it's cold. Before we then head over back with Endeavor, Ayazawa, and everyone else, where we see Ayazawa keep still holding up the uh, gnomes that he has, you know, that he has a razor with as they're trying to kill these guys, although they're pretty tough. While we see I, while we see Endeavor fighting off against the female gnome, where she says, like, oh, no, I want to feel even better, number one, which sounded weirdly sexual, if you ask me. Before she has her thighs explode again, firing off her projectiles. Endeavor uses the fire shield to take him to to take him out. Mi Miriko somehow is able to get back on her feet, and as like, hey Endeavor, you want me to take a kick before she falls right back down? The animation was weirdly good here too. Seriously, I don't know about y'all, but something I've noted with Bones recently is that they've been giving the most minuscule scenes, weirdly like weirdly high amounts of animation, way more than as they write them. Like we had in season five. That scene with uh, I, with uh, Shigaraki when he was a kid, that one dude that was like, you know, like kick, like that was kind of like stomping on the ground and moving his arm about. You had Shigaraki when he fell out of that, I uh, fell out of the tomb. I thought the animation there was way too fluid, man. It like it, like you don't need to make it that fluid. And the same thing happens with uh, Miracle as she as she fell down. But Bones was not done with the Sakuga laser. No, 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 no. Because then he hit. Then he then ISL fires off Hell Spider. Badass name, guys. I love the name of that. And the female Nomu just like mentions the dodge on like the old text. And my god, the animation here looked absolutely insane. You could barely see a lot of it because, of course, the, the screen was the dim, the dim screen and everything because, you know, Japan's uh, TV guidelines and everything. Either way, man, it looked fucking cool. Uh, but then, once when, when she starts to get close to, uh, to Endeavor, Grand Trio comes out of nowhere and manages to knock her down to the ground. That's when the other pro here is getting there, like, uh, Lock Lock. Yes, I finally figured out what the dude's name was. <laughs> uh, the fire hose dude, uh, uh, Ryukin, and a few and a few others, they all come in there to help out with Endeavor. Uh, they manage the man's to secure, and then I, and then, uh, Grant Rito, rather, goes in there, tries to, and just manages to take off a complete, like, chunk of the female gnome was brained off, but so, but it, but it basically instantly regenerates back. Grand Torino is of course shocked by this, and that's when Denver comes in there and hits the fire and hits the and hits the flash fire fist gentleman, which honestly looks more like a shuriken if you ask me. But hey, it was badass anyway. Finally, the gnomes have been defeated, and Ayazawa can probably close his eyes as he starts rubbing them, probably desperately needing some eye drops because I'm sure he kept his eyes open for a very long time. And that's when President Mike finally gets out and yeah, meets up with everyone else, with of course the good doctor in hand. We then head back over to we then head back to Shigaraki as Shigaraki's still shivering and Exos is just standing there shocked. He tries to use his eye laser again, but then Shigaraki just just, just decays him, which I wouldn't be surprised looked way more graphic in the manga and like you can see like the blood and of course like his flesh melting off or coming off together and all that shit. But of course the guy said this is probably one of the few times where the anime does have to do some censorship from the manga, and then he takes his cape and uses it like a blanket. <laughs> Before we then head over back over with Fatcom, basically right where we left off on the last time in the last episode, where they see Hawks go out the window, and and Tokoyami and then Tokoyami goes out there to help him, and we find out that apparently Tokoyami is the first person to ever get out of to ever break up his fat, which is pretty impressive, you ask me. Then he takes out the rest of the student, tells them to tell them to run the rest of the way back to the to the rear end, tell them that their classmates are okay, and then <laughs> and then Fat Gum starts chasing after him, saying, "Hey, I won't let you steal a ride on the fat sea or the fat taxi." I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce it. I guess we'll find out in the dub. So Tokoyami comes out and nowhere manages to stop uh, Dobby's attack. Dark Shadow attends to Hawk, where we find out that his hat, that his back is burnt off, and that his wings are burned. Which I don't think this is gonna be an overhaul situation where his wing, where he's like now corkless now because of his, of his wings. I think it just means he's gonna be out of commission for probably a good chunk, if not the rest of the season. We probably won't be seeing much more Hawk action for this for this season anyway. Although that could change. We do not know. Maybe there's a major time skip midway through it or some shit. I don't know. Like I said, I'm an anime only, so who the fuck knows. 
Anyway, Dobby tells him, like, oh, what a loser. You ain't even dragged down a student. And then that's when he point tells, and that's when Dobby points to, to twice. He tells him, that guy killed him. He stabbed him in the back as he ran to save his friends. And oh my god, I fucking love Tokoyami's face right here as Dobby tells him this about how Hawk stabbed him in the back. Obviously, there's some context missing. He's more, and he's just manipulating him. But still, oh my god, I love that shot. Shout out to the storyboard artist and Horikoshi, man. I love that. I love that shot right there of Tokoyami. It's fucking brilliant. Then we get this ultra-wide shot of Tokoyami and Dobby in shadows. And then we see Mount Lady in, like, the fore in like the background doing her thing. And he says, well, why did you come here? Did you come here to save him? What did you come to save? Those pros you admire so much play dirtier than guys like us. Uh, I, I fucking love this scene, man. Like I said, this kind of goes off, goes back to what I was saying a couple of reviews ago. And what she mentioned in his first review about how Horikoshi is, like, more recently been... been portraying the villains more like hero like the heroes and the heroes like the villains kind of thing Ugh, i love uh, i love that i love the scene man so tokoyami ends up to not tokoyami ends up just trying to help uh hawk so i'm like i'm only concerned about my teacher and he tells him think for himself they managed to fire us on a fire attack they managed to die of the course but of course because of the slant of the flames they can the dark shell can't really do anything and Hawks notices that he's still talking. And this next one I thought was pretty funny, where he says, what did you think, you be, you barbecue birds? I thought that line was pretty funny. And so he says, who do you think really needs rescuing? And, um, and, uh, and totally, I mean, that's what his orders are. And because of because Hawks knows that he has that, that he's still talking, and that's the reason that he hasn't faced him off yet, he also notices that his attacks have not been um, as powerful as they've been before. They've been a lot weaker. So he can't. So he thinks that he can't fire in rapid rapid succession attacks anymore. So that's what he tells. So that's what he tells Tokoyami to go. And then Tokoyami jumps over the railing. Actually, this, this was what I thought was pretty clever. Tok while having Dark Shout grab onto it, means so they slide. Uh, so I mean they swing over to like the floor right below them, which they end, which ends up kind of working. But uh, but Dark Shout ended up having to let go of the last thing because the fire, and they ended up just kind of like, like slamming into the ground, which I guess ended up knocking out uh, Hawks somehow. But uh, I don't know, probably because of just how weak he is. Any like any measly falls enough to be like, yep, I'm out, I'm done, I'm tapping, I'm tapping, bruh. <laughs> anyway, so then he picks him up, ready to go, ready to go with the uh, dark fall ninja. But then, uh, then out of nowhere, Dobby appears right before them, saying that I thought something like this might happen, so I saved up my by making the last shot swing. Yes, Dobby had become Eisen, where everything was a part of his plan. <laughs> I thought the scene was pretty fun because I'm like, damn, bro, this man just tripped, turned into eyes for a hot second. This was all a part of my plan. <laughs> anyway, man, that's so. Right before he's about to, right, so right before he's about to fire his attack, boom! This giant like tower of ice, whatever the fuck, this giant ice attack just pops out of nowhere, which separates them long enough for Tokoyami and Hawks to escape. Now, at first, I thought this was Todoroki because I had completely forgot about the ice climber, and I thought because it was ice and it saved Tokoyami, I thought it was uh, that somehow Todoroki managed to, like, go from, the, go from the city all the way back here, at least when I first thought, at least when I, at first, when I saw it. But then we, of course, see that it was, that this was the work of the Ice Climber, and then, so, so yeah, one of Dobby's teammates ended up helping out his enemy. <laughs> Lol. Anyway, because of, because of the ice attack, this sends, this sends, this sends, um, Mount Lady, like, flying back, and then you just see Factum looking up at Mount Lady's ass, and you see Scream's bottom as he tries to run out of the way, <laughs> which I thought was a, which I thought was a pretty funny scene. So, Tokoyami, so Tokoyami takes Hawks to safety as he's crying, telling him, we all believe in you, that you did what was right, so don't die. And then we get back to the basement where we have Redestro demanding on where the fuck his new, where the fuck his spirit legs are. And that's when we see that Machia has stood up. And he's like, I smell my master. And then we get one last shot of Shigaraki before we head over to the commercial cards, which we find the which Uraraka ended up being on the second one, which you know got a huge pop for me. I love Uraraka, best girl. So I knew, like, all oh, right, we're finally going to get some Uraraka screen time, which we ended up doing. We actually ended up getting some Uraraka screen time, and it was glorious, man. So we see Burning and everyone else, like, you know, like, controlling traffic, getting everyone to evacuate on the buses and everything. And it all seems good. You know, we have uh, <laughs> we have this amazing, this hilarious scene with Bakugo, where this older woman, you know, is like, oh, thank you, and offers Bakugo a chocolate bun. And <laughs> my man starts screaming. 
screaming at this poor woman saying, it'll make me thirsty, just go. <laughs> I fucking love Bobby. Then Uraraka comes in there, which obviously is always great to get some Uraraka screen time, saying, oh, she's just being nice, you should take it. And then Bakugo starts screaming at her, oh, you just want a chocolate bun, don't you? And given Uraraka's smile and how in her body language, she wanted the chocolate bun. <laughs> but if you were paying attention to the office, if you were paying attention to the background, you will see a Bakugo does end up taking it anyway. <laughs> and so then we get to eat a we have Ida, he's like, you know, doing his thing with his fucking, like, air chopping, he always does. It's karate chop action! <laughs> as, like, this one poor, as this one poor, overworked businessman, whether he's, I don't know if he's a mangaka or just some other businessman, he tells him, like, oh, I have an annual amount of script that needs to go, that needs to go for, yes, this dude is in the middle of an evacuation of a huge hero, villain, you know, attack operation going on, and this man is, wor and instead of worrying about it, it's like, this man's worried about his fucking manuscript. <laughs> Japanese work culture is built different, man. I mean, this is a fact we know, but it's always shocking whenever you go, whenever you see it in like an anime series, whether it's from a manga or just some guy, where you have a situation like this, and the dude is worried about his fucking manuscript that needs to go to the printer. It's insane, bro. It's actually insane, bro. Japanese words culture, man. I swear to God, man. I don't know how the Japanese college functions with that shit, man. Like, it, they just built different, man. I guess they just built different. So, anyway. He asks, he tells him to please don't destroy his building. And he is like, oh, no worry. We'll make sure your manuscript is protected. Which, given the end of this episode, uh, what building? <laughs> What man? Is there a good chance, bro? It's gone, bro. It got destroyed by Shigaraki. He didn't even tell him what apartment complex he belonged to or nothing. So we don't even know what he, where he, where he, where it was. But anyway, anyway, we then we then we actually see them that, that I actually thought was really clever. Where you have Koda actually directing all like all the cats and dogs, all the pets that these people own, and getting them all to sit, which I thought was really fucking clever uh, on Horikoshi's part to have Koda do this. I because that's what I was like, I wouldn't have thought of. So. Everything seems to be going well. We see Nejire, Ida, all is good, man. And then that, and then as Izuku is crossing the sidewalk, he hears the voice of the first user of One for All talking to him, saying, "He's coming, he's coming." And he, and Izuku just stands there, just kind of just stands there, and he starts like grabbing at his stomach. He, um, Todoroki's asking what's wrong. Bakugo is of course screaming at him to stop slacking, and he and then he and then he looks over to the side and tells him the backlash is coming. We don't have long to talk. And then he just looks up, and then we actually see from Uraraka's perception, and the dude Stram looks high. My man Stram looks high. Like there's no if to answer buzz about it. my man Izuku. He looks high. <laughs> <laughs> and Uraraka's kind of wondering what the hell's up with him. And then he tells him that Shigaraki has been freed from the shackles of humanity with increased power. And begs him as we get a bunch of as we, as we get as we get a bunch of freeze frames of Miriko, Endeavor, Ayazawa, basically everyone else that was stuck in that space is stuck in like this underground room. And then as the and, we, and all this is going down the the uh, the. Uh, the street light that turned that for the walkway for the crosswalk is blinking green, blinking, and then once it turns red, Shigaraki's powers activate, and the whole place just starts con 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 just deconstructing on its own. It also starts crumbling before us. Thought that I honestly thought that looked really cool, man. So, Grant's real. He managed to get President Mike and get them out of there while everyone else is running away from this. And the CGI here, as you see. All these buildings, as we see, all these building, buildings just crumble before our very eyes. Looks really good. So shout out, so shout out to, to Bones uh, CGI team here, man. This look great. And like this whole section looks rip. Like Loki right out of a disaster movie, even out like a bunch of crows, you know, fall and flying away from the building as it all starts deconstructing. And we have Shinger, and then we have uh, Ayazawa grabbing onto Ryuko, Ryukins, Ryuku's, um, you know, like tails or what, like his, like her claws or whatever, with like his with a scarf. And then we see and with like. Like one of the um, with one of the uh, gnomes grabbing onto his leg, but then crusts with his last ad before he finally deconstructs, you know, cuts his arm off and lighting T2, he goes out giving a thumbs up like it's T2, man. That was pretty cool. That was pretty cool, no lie. So as everyone else managed to get out there, like I said, the build everything, this entire just I don't know, city, whatever you want to call it, just starts deconstructing, all the buildings start coming down, man. It looked right out of a disaster, man. It looked fucking fantastic, man. The music and everything, it looked incredible. You had um, you had the good doctor talk about, like, oh, a miracle, or you say, plus ultra, Tomura Shigaraki has awakened, man. All your all your preparation will collapse in one stroke with his awakening, man. He says, we want some shit. So obviously, um, 
Nanaki, he's happy. He is a very happy man at this current moment, ladies and gentlemen. And as, and like, literally, this looked right out of a disaster as we see all these bills coming down. Izuku and the others are trying to fight, run away from, like, the destruction. Izu just, like, comes in there, trying to stop the shockwave with a St. Louis smash, does nothing. Then Todoroki hits his Evan Piercing Ice Wall attack. That breaks too. And then Bakugo grabbing people with his legs, which I thought was pretty cool looking. Uraraka uses a grapple hook. We had Sue. You have uh, Todoroki. You actually had Uraraka, you know, lit, wait, lit, weightless this one of the buses. Nedry picks up one. Izuku picks up another one with Black Whip, which don't know how he was able to keep it up in the air. Maybe that was the one Uraraka lifted up. I'm not sure. Whatever the case may be, they're all just trying to grab as many people as they can and just get out of there, just try to outrun the destruction. Well, all this is going down. Bernie is trying to com to communicate, trying to touch the command center, or just anybody to like to respond back to what's going on. Then we head over to the command center. We just start seeing all the screens start to like go to static. They're just as confused as, as we are about what's going on with all this destruction, man. It, it was absolutely, it was absolutely insane, man. So after all of this insanity going on, we then get back to Shigaraki as he goes to open this thing, which we found that he was making his own version of the cork removal bullets. Now. This is the reason why I'm not entirely sure if this is a flashback or this is a new scene that we didn't see in season four or maybe it was cut out or or this was something that was introduced right here in the manga as well. Because he says they're not most of them are not good anymore, and that's when we get to the scene where Shigaraki tells overall that when he was that when Mr. Compress was shot with his bullet, he couldn't use his quirk for a while. Keyword, for a while. Now, as you guys know, Miriko has or yeah, Miriko has has lost, or Mir Mirato, my bad, Mirko, <laughs> Mirato, lost his powers during season four. He was shot with one of the bullets, and, you know, went five minutes corkless against Overhaul. So, now, unless I am completely misremembering season four, and he later upgraded the one to permanently remove people's quirks, uh, like I said, like I said, it's been a minute since I've seen season four, that, is, that means that Mir Mir Mirio might actually be getting his powers back sometime soon. We don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. That's why I just thought, I thought that too, like I said, this could be just a flashback from season four that I just completely forgot about, and maybe he later upgraded the bullets where they permanently removed people's quirks. Like I said, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, guys. Tell me in the comments if I'm wrong or what have you. But yeah, that scene I thought was very interesting because especially what's going on with Mirio if that's going to mean that we'll see his return in as as Lamillion anytime soon we'll have to wait and see on that later anyway anyway that's when he find, that's when his head starts hurting as he starts to hear all one uh, all for one's voice in his head and that's when he finds like this phone thing and starts talking to Maki and tells him let's start with everybody I'm going to destroy I'm going to from here, I'm good. I will destroy everything. He roars, and ladies and gentlemen, that is where the episode ends. Phenomenal episode, man! I love this episode, especially the ending with the with, uh, with the destruction of the city of the Jaku Hospital and everything. Very much came off like a disaster. Really. Although I will say, in terms of massive the city-wide destruction set pieces, I still probably say Tokyo Ghoul Re had the best one, taking a more found footage uh, approach to it in the manga that was also later carried on in the re-anime, which I was very happy to see. That was insane, bro. If you've read Tokyo Ghoul Re, y'all know how insane that chapter was. And Ashida beautifully doing it and taking some like taking like a found footage approach to it to that chapter where there was barely any dialogue. Oh my god, that chapter was insane, bro. That chapter was mad. Anyway, see so ya yeah, guys. Now, the next episode preview. Oh, that next episode preview, though, where it looks like we will be seeing Shigaraki versus Endeavor. You know that's getting a reaction, bro. And probably a double reaction, depending on how crazy it is when the dub of this drop, bro. Yo, this episode was absolutely insane, bro. And next week, that one, that one's going to be mad, bro. You know that episode is going to be insane. Bones is going to be going hard with the animation, bro. The storytelling and that one's going to be insane during the fight. Ooh, I'm hyped. I cannot wait for that episode. Next week is going to be insane, bro. Anyway, guys, that is where we're going to review off. Overall, I give this episode a 9.5 out of 10, guys. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like if you did, subscribe if you're new. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, if you feel like it. Links down in the description box below. And as always, come back for more. See you guys next time. You're welcome, 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 you're